Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. And for a long time, I have attempted to put my finger on exactly what it, what new agery means, because usually it's not a positive statement. Uh, the new age was a terminology that came out of, I guess, around the 80s from different spiritually channeled books. So how can something that's very good, which is spiritual development outside of religion, turn into something that is often thought of in a negative connotation? Like, oh, this person is a new ager. So um, for the most part, I would say that the, the quote, new age movement has done tremendous good good for uh, society because it has turned people away from the old orthodoxies and has brought awareness of topics like life after death into the mainstream and that's amazing but the bad reputation has to do with ways it has veered off course and this is largely due to human mistakes common human uh, patterns of behavior that a lot of us fall into usually with the best intentions in mind so what occurs is that we get limited information about the other side complex spiritual subjects people's encounters with deceased people and encounters with um, higher or source consciousness or group souls usually like uh, kind of divine or cosmic encounters if you will typically in the form of near-death experiences taking this information and attempting to synthesize it into a pattern or a system that people can follow, basically turning limited information into a kind of like a religion. So this is just the way that humans make sense of information, so I can't hold it against people for doing this. I think we do this with a lot of different subjects as we attempt to make sense of the universe, but usually it doesn't work out so well. As an example, in the, in the fields of science and scientific advancement, we get people who attempt to build a system around a scientific discovery as a way, as like a system to follow and use to make sense of everything. And this creates what we call scientism. And scientism is when people are unable to look beyond the scientific method as a way to understand anything at all. And so these are the people who will dismiss anything that doesn't fit rigid standards of being able to reproduce it in a laboratory. And then they create this very narrow perspective about what reality has to consist of. And anything that, anything that doesn't fit within that box, they will summarily dismiss. That's scientism. So New Ageism does a similar thing on the flip side. Um, but I think where New Agery developed a bad reputation is with a tendency to then begin bringing in lots of information into a, a spectrum, into a system that can be followed without discriminating what's what. So you have the old jokes about people going to crystal conventions and being sold a bill of goods being sold things that don't actually have an effect uh you know being sold magical pixie dust that's supposed to cure xyz and it doesn't do any of those things unless you just happen to get lucky because your own power of intention was able to to uh cure your disease and you think it was because of the bag of pixie dust that you bought so this is the bad stereotype that comes with the new age movement because you see that happening a lot and i also see that happening in regard to metaphysical or spiritual types of philosophies where it's just like well let's just bring anything in this person had a near-death experience let that let's just take that at face value that person had a near-death experience this person says they saw god that person says they meet with deceased loved ones that person says she's a medium and then just accepting all of that and what you end up getting is highly contradictory information that most people can't quite make sense out of and this is why average people don't subscribe to these ideas because the old uh, as they say the the bs meter goes off and it's very unappealing to people and so this is kind of the big pr marketing issue that the afterlife has because of the tendency for people just, just to accept anything and not use critical thinking and critical analysis 
So anyway, so with that rant out of the way, I want to I want to bring up Kevin Williams's afterlife map at neardeath.com. Kevin Williams, I mean, I uh, he's one of the first resources that I began using to learn about these subjects, and this is way back, like like literally almost almost twenty years ago at this point. Uh, his, that's how long this website's been around, and I remember exchanging emails with Kevin Williams, like like literally, when I was like fourteen years old. That that's that's how long ago this was. And um, he's helped bring near death experiences into the forefront. So he, he does a lot of great work. But I, di- I definitely take issue, a little bit of issue at least, with his uh, afterlife maps. And so I had a reader, a viewer, email me, sending me the link to this. And I, I hadn't looked at it in a long time. It might have been on Victor's uh, report recently. I'm not sure. But he had a lot of issues with this. And it was causing him a bit of anxiety. And. So I checked it out again to see why it was causing anxiety, and then I, I read it again, and I can see various reasons of you know, why this type of information might be leaning toward a level of inaccuracy that I think somebody who's using their critical thinking abilities and is looking at all the other evidence of the afterlife, they may, they may hear these things, and, and it, it, it might very well bother them. Um, so, uh, let's just kind of dig into it. I'm going to read this kind of map of heaven, this afterlife map, and I'm going to pick apart some of the things that really doesn't resonate with me. And again, you know, this is, these are just my opinions, so don't, um, this isn't gospel. I, you know, I really don't think anybody should be holding a lot, many things to, to gospel. Like that, that's the whole issue. That's the problem that I'm trying to deal with here. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I want to point out, like, why this kind of map, this system, leaves me feeling really bored. Like, it, it gives me this sense of cosmic boredom, and hopefully I'll be able to express why. So let's take a look. I'm going to blow the screen up a little bit so I can read it easier. Okay. So, um... So we talked a little bit about PMH, Atwater. Atwater had a near-death experience. Atwater's NDE was very, like, celestial, cosmic in nature, like, no astral plane or anything like that. Uh, some people, they they have near-death experiences, and it's just, like, straight-up cosmic experience with God, and that's it. And so a lot of people get the false assumption that there is no such thing as astral worlds or other worlds or, you know, like an afterlife like we talk about here because they read a near-death experience. I think Anita Morjani would fall, falls into that category as well. And that, that's just one reason the NDE field tends to be a bit limited in its um, interpretation of information. So, the graph below represents a map through the major afterlife realms which experiencers have encountered during their near-death experiences. Okay, great. Although, you know, I will say that, you know, the big issue with near-death and neardeath.com and Kevin Williams is that it's very, um, very myopic. Now, he does cite Emanuel Swedenborg, which is great. So, we're going to, like, the near, the out-of-body realm, the astral projection realm, which, which is very, very useful. But... Like that, ninety-five percent of the stuff on the website, it's 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 only using near-death experiences and not after-death communication, not like physical mediumship, uh, spirit communication, astral projection, other subjects which arguably have more depth and more information about these topics than just near-death experiences. Near-death experiences are on a spectrum that goes from what, in my opinion, is very accurate to. Uh, near-death experiences where you see Santa Claus and, and, and the Easter Bunny and characters from TV shows or you have all of your religious prejudices confirmed and you learn about how you know Satan is real and God is a guy with a white beard sitting on a throne. So near-death experiences, they have a spectrum of like absurdity to accuracy. And that alone, I think, is a reason that we need to be very careful in using near-death experiences exclusively to learn about metaphysical subjects. Kevin continues, No experiencer that I am aware of has encountered every afterlife realm depicted on the graph. Good point. That I definitely agree with that. Most experiencers have experienced three or four realms. Looking at the graph, one can see how the afterlife journey begins with death of the physical body in the physical realm, or realm one, which is the physical universe planet earth for humans so right away i take some issue with this concept because what we can learn from great out-of-body experiencers um books like autobiography of a yogi 
um, some channeled materials, including like the Law of One and my own experiences, is that the, the universe is multidimensional. The cosmos is, is not just the cut and dry. There is the physical universe with physical planets and star systems, but there's and parts of our own universe that you could maybe look at through a telescope that have less density than other parts. The astral world is still in this physical cosmos, but it's on a spectrum above it. So everything that's here is there. So there, there's a planet Venus, a planet Mercury on the astral world, just as there is on, on, on this spectrum. So it's not this cut and dry. So this is a misinterpretation, in my opinion. So um, it's not like... It's not like when you die here, you you no longer have any relationship to the vast cosmos of billions and billions of stars and planets. It's more like you've, you've uh, switched to a different frequency. This is why when I astral project, I'm in a world that's a copy of this one. And the people on that side describe it very eloquently and say, yeah, you've just switched your frequency up to our, our side. And you're still on planet Earth. So it's not like you leave planet Earth, you're just on a different frequency of the same planet. That's how most, many, many people have their, I guess you could call it afterlife experience. But a second issue I have with this is that, um, it's funny because Williams mentions in this, in this same article that there isn't such a thing as an afterlife. We're on the same spectrum as any other dimension. So, I mean, there is no such thing as like this dichotomy of, afterlife and no afterlife it's a it's a continuous existence but then here he says is that um the afterlife journey begins at this point uh, with death of the physical well we can argue that no there isn't you know we're already in the quote afterlife we're in a realm and then this realm finishes and we transition to a different density it doesn't it's not you know it's not that there isn't really this concept of of living a life on the earth and then going up to heaven like that's um vast simplification after death humans travel through various afterlife realms with the ultimate goal of becoming a permanent citizen of the god realm or realm six um immediately i take issue with this so this concept which I believe in is that there is a grand, like the quote, highest level of consciousness is that you're just a singular entity with God. So I can go into a whole book about this topic and why I don't agree with this statement, which is that um, somehow it's our goal to get back to singular consciousness because basically singular consciousness, singular God consciousness decided to become individual consciousness decided to separate into like basically an infinite amount of individual conscious individual entities you and me cats and dogs uh cockroaches and termites plants and animals whatever you whatever you want to call it and so this uh, exists basically infinitely and people can become individuals and develop their individuality and then learn how to love and appreciate and explore others who are unique and have their own sort of like unique elements of the universe a, you know a, a personality that you meet that's so dynamic like this is part of the universe and then we get to explore that it's a beautiful thing going back to god consciousness would literally mean ending all of that so this, so ending the cosmic experiment and going back to just being one single mind again so uh, I'm not doubting that this state of existence is real, but what we're doing, th this is new ageism. So we, we become aware of this state of consciousness and then we're trying to create a system and saying, well, the goal in life is we have to go back to that state of existence. That's, that's the end game. That's what we're all trying to do, are we? Because from that state of existence, it's wanting to come back to our state of existence, right? So to quote six level or seventh level or whatever arbitrary number you assign to that level, level of consciousness, from that point, God is wanting to come back to the level we're at right now. Check my phone real quick. I have uh, somebody coming over. I don't wanna spend my, my whole day working and end up canceling plans anyway. So, um, so from that, from, from God consciousness, it wants to be individual. It wants to explore like the microcosms of, of existence. It wants to create things. It wants to be you and me. It wants to fall in love, meet people and 
uh, have like little individual facets of itself break off and kind of become their own gods, you know. So uh, it's obviously much more complicated than, than just this cut and dry system where, okay, we all have to just go back to the nth level again. Um, so this to me, it sounds like human thinking. So it's, a, it's the idea of, of assigning a, a very linear system or pattern to existence. This gives people anxiety because many people, they, they see greater things that they don't want to give up. Like they, you know, falling in love or exploring existence. Like a lot of things that from a logical standpoint, you wouldn't be able to do on this highest level again. So the idea that we're all being forced on a on a on a on assembly line to go back to that level of existence causes people anxiety. I think that's why it caused the the, the reader who who who, uh, who sent me an email about this anxiety because it's very um, again it just from a philosophical standpoint it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. Uh, this is accomplished through the process of reincarnation, trial and error through multiple lifetimes in which we gradually become perfected. So right away, you know, anytime we talk about perfection, I'm very skeptical. Perfection is in imperfection. You know what happens when you get people obsessed with perfection? You get those people who just, they, they, they can't find a stable relationship, they can't find a stable job, they can't... Um, they can't look at themselves in the mirror and be happy because they're obsessed with things being perfect. And clearly there is no such thing as perfection short of just being self-content, happy and full of love and love for yourself and love for others. That I guess is the closest we can get to perfection while also accepting all the imperfections. You see, um, maybe God consciousness is quote perfect but I think it's that actual perfection that causes a kind of cosmic boredom that makes people, that makes God consciousness want to be reincarnated. Number two, um, this is accomplished through the process of reincarnation through multiple lifetimes. So we also know from more advanced work, which is not this website, in my opinion, at least not this article, that reincarnation doesn't happen like people think it does. Um, it seems like when you know we have a group soul, the group soul spinning off and incarnating into different facets of itself, but every incarnation is kind of its own unique organism. That until maybe a day comes when they all kind of merge back together, you know, if you read the law of one, this would be entering like the sixth density. But until a day comes when every you know when all these incarnations maybe kind of join back up again, these are all individual lives that. Um, you may not have awareness of, so you might be reincarnated right now as a uh, as a casino dealer in Hungary. That's just me, stream of consciousness, you know, thinking of an example. And you would have no awareness of it, and then you would die, and you still wouldn't have awareness of it unless you tapped into that element of your group soul. The casino uh, uh, the casino um, worker in Hungary would die, and then have its own life and time and experience and possibly meet up with you and there would be an instant connection because you both of you would be part of the same group soul right so you'd, you know you'd almost be like you guys are together like a single mind and then you'll meet up and find out you have so much in common it's like you guys are just finishing each other's sentences it's like you're both part of the same the same organism in a sense but that's kind of how reincarnation works so Anytime we, we veer into the, the traditional realm, I get a little bit weary when we talk about um, linear reincarnation rather than like multi-dimensional reincarnation. So I'm not sure if that's what Williams is is um, is implying here, but I, I get the sense that might be what we're go what 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 we're going towards. Okay, to continue, a good analogy of humanity's journey through the afterlife realms, as represented by the graph below is to think of the afterlife realms as God's corporate ladder of success. Give me a break. Okay, it's not... This This is a hierarchical, human, linear way of thinking that I, I fundamentally disagree with. We're applying a corporate ladder to multidimensionality where every single dimension, every astral world, every type of experience has unique things to offer. So it's not like you immediately you are in a... 
a, a quote better condition by being on an upper level area uh, an exalted level of consciousness, somebody on an exalted state of consciousness may very well choose to incarnate here and to that soul. This is the higher level of the ladder because this is where we get to experience um, challenge and where we, where we test our mettle. So, um, so right away, I completely disagree with this corporate ladder of success model, uh, Kevin. That's re really, really silly. We begin employment at the ground level, realm one of the physical universe. Are you sure? Because what about people who incarnate from elsewhere and then they want to live here to challenge themselves or learn or develop? Uh, through hard work and on-the-job education, humanity is gradually climbing God's corporate ladder with the goal of becoming a full partner with the boss, God, at the corporate level of realm six. I don't even think I have to say anything. It's just ridiculous. However, this analogy only works from our current life's point of view and gives the erroneous suggestion that the Earth realm and physical realm one is an inferior realm. Okay, great. So, perfect. Now we're on the same page again. The fact is we are soul spirit beings who have had a multitude of past life experiences on Earth and perhaps even in the soul and spirit realms. Yeah, I mean, that now I, I'm, I'm happy that it went from being really ridiculous back to being sensible, so I agree with that. So what we learn about, like, let's say a book like Autobiography of a Yogi uh, describes very well how even the astral world is, a, is an incarnation. So anywhere that you're not a featureless, genderless orb of light, which is also on this website and says that this is what happens when we die, um, then you're incarnated, right? So when you have a form, when you have an identity, when you have... When you're operating, kind of, when you're playing the game, so to speak, it's it's a quote incarnation. Now, what's really interesting about the book, The Law of One, is it basically says that when you're not incarnated, it's like you're not really developing as a soul. So you can be in like a completely um, non-physical type of type of existence, but ultimately you end up desiring to go to this world, go to the astral world, to, to be an identity, to be a to be an individual soul, and begin on that path. Because that's where all the content happens. That's where we learn, grow, experience different things, and fulfill our desires of creativity and exploration. So, um, in the Law of One, it describes the fifth density, the place where we're just like non physical beings, as being a period of self reflection, where we get to think about basically, you know, join with our group soul, think about what our next steps are going to be and then decide like what is our next incarnation going to be and this is outside of the astral planes like this this is an entirely different like separate existence and so some people have near-death experiences and, and and they go directly to that type of type of level and it creates the um, false assumption that this is what the whole afterlife is like and we have no we can either go there or we can incarnate back in this piece of junk body in this you know decaying planet but they completely miss the fact that you can go the, to to endless astral dimensions, realms just a little bit less physical than this one, where we can continue to explore and create and have exciting lives and meet people and all of that. So that that that's also relates to this to this heaven map because. Um, basically, what it's doing here is. The rest of this, like I don't want to get into this whole thing because it's really it's really long. I'll have I'll put a link in the description, but it talks about the physical realm. Then it talks about the earthbound realms, um, uh, which is just the in between state. Uh, so Kevin Williams makes a huge mistake here by by conflating the earthbound realm with the uh, astral plane and the dream the dream realm. Or the world of hungry ghosts or hell. So this is straight up New Agery. It's um, he's saying that the astral plane, which is very, which is huge and vast, <clears throat> uh, and the conditions are undoubtedly better than this world, um, is on the same playing field as being earthbound uh, or being in a dream. And so this, this this is exactly why people are confused about the afterlife because they read stuff like this, and I almost want to make a separate video just about this one, uh, this, this one block point because it's it's completely wrong, and um, it's based on these false assumptions again that any kind of experience that isn't either merging with God or being a formless, genderless orb of light in a uh, in a um, 
kind of, um, I don't know, like, um, I always joke around like a big lava lamp, like, you know, anything that's not these types of experiences is inferior and on the same level as being in a dream or being among hungry ghosts or being in hell. So that's literally what Kevin Williams says. I completely disagree. Realm 3 is the void. Uh, realm of complete and profound darkness, empty of everything except for the thought and emotional patterns of those who enter it. So this kind of lines up with uh, Law of One, talking about the fifth the fifth density. Uh, it is a perfect place for inhabitants to examine themselves, contemplate their recent experiences, and decide where to go next. For some people, the void is a heavenly experience because in the absence of everything else, they are able to see, to see perfectly the love and light within themselves. For others, the void can be terrifying or confusing. Um, the void is where people undergo ego death. Uh, and you know I have some opinions about the ego. So many in the experiences find themselves immediately in the void. So this is where I guess I agree a bit. I would I don't know why we'd classify this as realm three. That doesn't make any sense putting a hierarchy on this. This is a realm that anybody can go into. If you know, if if you put your consciousness inward and you find yourself in this realm that's outside of incarnation. So this is kind of it's where you decide like where am I gonna go next? And I would say, like many people, when you die, they may find themselves in this state of existence, communicating like with a higher self, and then they decide, well, you know, they're going to go off to like the astral dimension, which is not a dreamscape. It's not a place for hungry ghosts, and it's not hell, like Kevin describes in the paragraph above this one. It's a continuation of the, of, of your incarnation, where, for instance, you know, deceased loved ones can reunite, where you can be in an Earth-like environment. And so sometimes those decisions happen from this in this kind of non-physical escape that the law of one calls it the fifth density, um, the void. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with this. Portal, the tunnel, the receiving station, a temporary transit area of heavenly sorting area where the destinations of souls is decided. Um, pretty, I don't, I mean... So, so a few people have had near-death experiences where they, they experience like a, a receiving station for dead people. And it's just like, we, we can't, we, we, we can't get, obtain a picture of how the universe operates based on, um, based on a few near-death experiences that that experience is kind of like bu bureaucratic side of the afterlife. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So Kevin cites five near-death experiences where people experience something like this. I've never heard a dead person talk about this. It almost just seems like people caught up in a bureaucratic way of looking at, at, at existence that maybe they find themselves in a system that, 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 that's, that's like that. It doesn't mean that this is something that we have to put down on, the, on, the, on this uh, all-encompassing map of heaven. Realm 4, the soul realm. So this is very complicated and convoluted. Basically, they're saying that there's all these, um, I mean, it's kind of like he's describing the astral plane. Um, after death, souls incarnate in a number of soul realms between Earth lifetimes until the soul has attained its proper level of soul growth and is ready for advancement to, to the spirit realms. Um, there's a lot of, like, again, kind of like, I hate to say again, new agery stuff. It's difficult, and I really want to get into it. But the sun being alive and yada yada. Um, so I mean, he's describing different types of realms of existence. So really, what he's describing is the astral plane that that he dismissed previously. Um, these are different realms of existence we go to to learn different things and develop who we are and explore different things. Sounds great, but I disagree with the idea that. This is such a limited experience where we just do this temporarily to work things out before we are on this assembly line back to God consciousness again. Whereas in reality, it's like the cosmos is massive. I mean, again, billions times billions of planets in this cosmos with countless gradients and density levels to explore countless civilizations. It's, it's beyond anyone's comprehension. So it's not this temporary stopover point where we just work out our physical desires, quote, until we go back to becoming, you know, on this assembly line, 
toward God consciousness. This is, I mean, it, it's a massive reductionist point of view to how reality operates. So we don't just exist in those states of consciousness, those states of existence, for any kind of like very limited, very brief um, type of thing. We we do it because the universe god is continually expressing itself continually creating new things continually exploring itself there's continually endlessly new souls new individual souls who are part of this whole grand story it's all working together um these are not temporary trivial realms of existence this is this is existence and if there's any lesson to learn it's, it's to be happy and accept uh, existence around you and and recognize all of it as being divine all of it as being important so it's not a temporary type of place where we just pass through realm six the spirit realms or realm five rather after all the soul realms associated with our solar system why our solar system there's billions of solar systems we can there's so much to explore and do who cares about our solar system in the grand scheme of things Having fully experienced all the lessons have been f fully learned and the proper level of soul growth has been attained, the soul can move on to spirit realms associated with constellations and star systems around the spiritual universe. Uh, some NDE experiences have met their higher self in this realm. Some experiences have described seeing a city of light. Of, of, uh, um, again, this is just massive reductionism. Cities of light could be all over different levels of like the astral spectrum. There's all kinds of cities and realms to explore. Um, there's there's no way to define this as being a quote spirit realm and something else as being a soul realm. This this terminology almost doesn't make any sense. Um, this stuff about constellations and star systems. Um, are there other planets with lives, with, with, with civilizations? Um, yes, I believe that if you go up in the spectrum, on the astral spectrum, a planet like Venus could be filled with life, whereas here it's just a, it's a, it's a rocky, dead landscape. So yeah, there's all kinds of things we can experience in the cosmos by going through other dimensions. It's endless, it's vast. But if we're not limited just to this cause, to this solar system or this star, like like that, that feels like um, we're going into like some like primitive, primitive religious thinking where they believe that the Earth is the center of the universe. Stars are just like pinpoints of light in the uh, affirm in, in the firmament or the firmament. Uh, the sun rotates around our planet. Like it's, I, I feel like we're going back in time here by putting emphasis on our own solar system. I mean, I, I believe that there's billions of planets with billions of extraterrestrial civilizations. Um, you know, our our consciousness, our incarnation, could be linked to who knows how many other civilizations and and, and people from different worlds. Like, why are we uh, bound to just? Our one uh, solar system that doesn't make any sense. Uh, some in the experiences have met their higher self in this realm. Okay, great, but you can meet your higher self anywhere. You can meet your higher self in this realm through meditation. That doesn't mean anything. So I don't see any difference between quote soul realms and quote spirit realms. There's different gradients of existence. Trying to classify these doesn't make any sense. Then realm six, the god realm, the highest realm, is completely outside of the universe. Okay, this is the god realm, and is the ultimate destination of every spirit. Is it the ultimate destination? I talked about this earlier. You can we can go back to the beginning of the video. Uh, NDE experiences have described becoming completely absorbed into or one with God in this realm. The god realm was also known as various religious traditions, as 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 a uh, Vaikuntha, Tyan. Akanintha, Shamayam, the kingdom of God and Christianity, Jana, Islam. It is possible there are a multitude of these realms as well. You know, if you go into uh, other other esoteric literature, like even some of the stuff like Jurgen Ziwe talks about, like attaining attaining like unity consciousness is actually what the God realm kind of should be. So it's realizing that you're connected to everything around you. So you no longer 
feel this intense separation and you can kind of feel like the loving energy coming off of everything like, like that's kind of what it means to obtain a level of unity consciousness and this is of course a key to i, I guess having a more, a more rich more more fulfilling uh interpretation of existence and so when we talk about a hierarchy like where we are like ancient traditions talk about getting back to that level of existence again but it doesn't mean abandoning your individuality and going into this level six place where all minds just just join together into one uh, cosmic galactic soup so that's the interpretation people get reading this and based upon myself reading this that's i'm mean, that that's what i think that kevin williams like lit literally believes is that you know we go back to this galactic soup whereas as the bible said the kingdom of heaven is within so that means is that you know we can be on this level of unity consciousness and all that's going to mean is that we can be operating into our maximum potential here and in, in here even in this world or the astral world or the soul world spirit world whatever terminologies you want to use uh, i don't think any of it's accurate but we could all be we can argue that we're all on a path of gaining like total acceptance and love within ourselves to be able to love other people and then gain a, a sense of unity with everything around us which creates a kind of splendor or or, 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 or um, cosmic bliss that people do experience i don't have any problems with that but this th th this is being conflated with the idea of there being like one world that's on the uppermost spectrum of existence where we give up who we are and we, we we rejoin the kind of galactic soup now this type of existence level it, it may be that may be the case but i don't see any reason to believe that this is a place that we all have to go back to and that's um like we're all on this linear path to get back to that point so now this has been a long video and it's probably probably a difficult one to you know fully wrap one's mind around but now but if, if, if we go through the rest of this this article it's like it just the many NDE pathways through the afterlife realms, earth, earthbound, void, receiving station, heaven. So, like, again, I really disagree with this. This is why I talk about in past videos, people think, oh, no, grandpa is earthbound because a medium said that he's fly fishing on a lake. And we all know when you die, you have to be... You have to be in some an exalted um, being of light who exists in a crystal city. You can't be on a lake fly fishing. Un uh, Uncle Larry, Grandpa Henry must be uh, earthbound, which is part of the astral plane that Kevin Williams said is the same as being in a dream or being in hell. Um, and they freak out and they try to get a medium to send them from, from the astral plane through the void to a receiving station to finally go into heaven where we can all be light beings floating around in a crystal city. It's a vast misinterpretation of what the afterlife is like. It's a vast misinterpretation of, of the concept of densities, of, of moving up densities. It's a misinterpretation of what, what astral worlds are like and also what human souls desire and what we wish to experience and the places we wish to go to. Um, so I, I like Kevin Williams. I like his website, but uh, this the, 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 this map system at at best it'll confuse people, and at worst it'll cause people you know to feel grief and pain about this whole system that that it feels like we're 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 forced into. None of it's true, in my opinion. What we're what we're doing is this is New Ageism, so. We're taking information from different NDEs that are themselves really difficult for people to properly describe, and we are uh, assigning systems and values to that that are quite uh, misinterpreted. So we were piecing together people's already really difficult to understand, really difficult to put into words experiences, and we're trying to create like a pattern to follow, but in doing so, I think I think we completely mess up. So that's my feeling about this. And you you can keep reading this if you want. Uh, as you can see, it just goes on and on. And um, and there's definitely stuff here that is useful, that is valuable, that in my opinion is accurate. 
But the big picture to me is inaccurate, and especially when when uh, Kevin is going off about the Earthbound realm, um, basically basically pooping on everybody's wonderful experiences on the astral dimension and likening it to a dream state or being a hungry ghost or being in hell. So um, so some of that stuff is just just straight up false information, and I have to call it out. If you like this video. I encourage you to please hit the subscribe button to help keep this channel going. You can go down and punch the red button that says subscribe. Like it, share it, hit the notification bell. Get involved with afterlifetopics.com. You can buy books like Understanding Life After Death, which will hopefully put to rest some of these ideas. Um, you can um, get involved in the classes if you want to support the channel. I uh, find it difficult to be traveling uh, sometimes living out of a backpack, but also keeping all this going, keeping the website and the videos and the books coming. So any kind of donations are always appreciated. Uh, you can become a student in the classes. The classes are twice a week. They're really in-depth, big discussions about a lot of these subjects. You can get involved with that. by you, know, you can shoot me a message on Facebook or um, go to afterlifetopics.com, whatever. Just some ideas. Anyway, so this has been an exhausting one. I need to go eat some lunch. Uh, I'm here in Jakarta, Indonesia. You know, as a final note, you know what? It's just, it's just so great, like meeting people and being in other cultures and experiencing the joy of like trying different foods and meeting locals and seeing how they how they view life. That you know, to me, it's just like, um, why should we demand things that are so much greater? Why can't we just first just learn to enjoy and love life like this? and explore the astral worlds and explore this world and there's just so much to explore and do like why why do we have to be focused on trying to get to the end so quickly like even if this was true even if even if the god realm is where we all have to go like why can't we just enjoy the journey why why do we have to follow these systems okay that's enough ranting i'll see you guys on the next video